Good afternoon everyone, how are you all? Lovely to see some familiar names on here this morning or this afternoon should we say, I hope you're all well. Again, it's a lovely, lovely afternoon, the sun is shining. I'm just gonna pull that up a little bit because it's pulling on my neck a little bit, sorry about that. Um, I hope you're all well. Um, again, the sun is shining, which is fabulous, isn't it? So if the sun's shining, you know you're set for a good day, fingers crossed. So um, in today's studio, we are gonna be using the lovely heart stamp. Uh, I've just spent the last minute or two looking for it, can't find it anywhere. But I think you know the one that I'm referring to. So we're going to be making a magic slider card today. Now, I don't know if anybody's seen them before. It's completely not my idea. They have been around for a long, long time. But I think as time's evolved, a lot of people have changed it to make it work a little bit better or been a little bit more creative and added more things to it. So what I've done is I've cherry picked all the elements that I like out of everybody else's makes and I've composed them into one card that I think is going to um, be simple enough to create a magic card. So I hope that's okay. So if you've never seen one before, today's going to be a lovely show for you. Uh, again, there's no measuring. We don't do measurements. It's too complicated, isn't it? So let's keep it simple. So have I got anything to tell you? I just want to show you the two Craft Academy stamps that are launching after this one. So we have take a stroll and enjoy the view. There we go. So you can see them there um, on the pictures. I'll turn them over because that's a little bit easier. There we go. So these are the ones that are coming up for next week's tuition. So we're starting on Monday and we're going to start with the lovely um, enjoy the view on Monday. I hope this is okay. Um, if you do like any of the Craft Academy stamps, all you have to do is go to our website www.stampsbyme.co.uk and pop FBL into the search engine and it shows you all the Craft Academy stamps that we've launched, the new ones, our earlier ones and if there's any left they are there and the tuition is always on YouTube for you. So if you are watching for the first time my name is Tony Darrick, it's lovely to see you, I'm a guest presenter over on Create and Craft and this channel is to inspire one another. We um, just love anything that makes somebody else smile or yourself smile, which is good, isn't it? So um, if you are watching YouTube, don't forget to click the subscribe button, the little HD button also if you're wanting a better viewing experience. And after the show, and this is after we've gone off live, if you can pop a comment under the YouTube video, and maybe click that like button, that's if you liked it. And um, this um, helps gives us a wider reach on YouTube to other fabulous crafters who might be looking for a little bit of inspiration too. So let's crack straight on. I did ask Tim to bring me a coffee. Um, I'm still waiting. I won't get one. So Nathan is running the show today, so be nice. Um, he's, uh, this is his third time, I think, on his own and he's doing a fabulous job. So well done, Nathan. And let's hope we have a good show. So who's crafting along today? Let me know. <laughs> Hi, Jan. Hi, Ronnie. <laughs> Hi, Tony, you mean Jan. <laughs> oh, fast fingers on that board. So there's a few crafting, which is great. Okay, so I'll try and break it down as much as I can. If I've done anything ahead of time, it shouldn't prevent you from crafting along. But do remember that at the end of the show, you can, you can pause me throughout this show if you want to. If you're thinking I'm running away with you and you can't quite keep up, just press pause, rewind. It doesn't go away. It doesn't alter anything. Or if you just want to watch the show through live and then maybe go back and watch it again, you can do that. But I'm hoping a lot of you will try this card today because it's a super interactive card, which is great for children if you want to do it for children. But it's also fun for adults as well. And it's something different. So in today's show, we have the lovely heart stamp. So if you don't have this stamp, you could create a magic card using a stamp that you already have in your stash. So please don't switch off. You don't have to buy the products. You can maybe use something you've got in your stash to make a magic slider card too. I'm going to tell you now, it does take quite a bit of concentration to make sure that I tell you the right information so you can make this card. So if I miss any questions, please don't be offended because I'm going to really be concentrating on making sure I give you um, the correct information. So when you do do it at home, it's going to be correct and it's not going to frustrate you when you try and put it together. So I hope that's okay. Uh, yes, a lot of you have been buying the click of the day. How fabulous is that? 
great price. Well done, Create and Craft. If you um, wanting some inspiration with regards to those um, stamps and dies that are on the click of the day over on Create and Craft, Victoria on our design team makes a lot of cards using those um, stamps. She swears by them. They are in the gallery on the Eureka fan page and I think it's called Tied With A Bow. So if you go into the Tied With A Bow photos, you'll see all the samples in there that the design team made with them. So I hope that helps. And it's a good starting point if you've got them in your hand and you're like, where do I start? So, okay, so let's make something pretty. Oh, let's show you what you're making. That would help, wouldn't it? So I'll just show you this one here. So this is the card that we're going to try and make today so it looks there for you try and get yours a little bit straighter than mine and then I just tilt it back a little bit and you've got this little tab on here and then when you pull it out it gives you the lovely colored hands can you see that there so I hope you like that one thought it's a bit hard to pop it back in when I'm above it but there we go and I'm going to show you a way on how I'll just can we just pop it on the overhead here just to show you and then you'll be able to see how it's done. So there we go, that's a little bit easier for me. <laughs> there we go, so you get the coloured hands come up from behind like magic. But again, you don't have to have this specific stamp to do this um, type of card. So it's pretty, pretty easy. And this is just some um, Sintelair glue. Okay, so there we go. So let's have some fun. It's not hard, you might don't look at it and think, oh, it's hard, it's not hard. And I'm gonna break it down for you so you can make lots and lots. You can make some amazing Christmas cards with the Santa. If you've got the Santa stamp, you know, him climbing up the tree, so it could be black and white, and then when you pull it out, he's actually got a red suit on or a green suit, so there's loads of ideas. So to start with, you're gonna need a five by seven card blank. So this is just a normal card blank, and I've gone for this, um, rather than a top folding, I've gone for side folding because I feel probably a lot of you will have this type of card in your stash and not all of you do have the top folding. So just a normal 5x7 card. There we go. So you can see that there. Very, very simple. So I've just got a rectangle die here just so I can pop a hole in this, the front of this card. And this die is... Four by five and a half. So if you can get one around that size from your stash, that would be great. So I'm just going to pop this onto my die cutting plate here. And I'm just going to see if I've just got some tape to hold it in place. I might not have it, it might be in my bag, but it's okay. It's okay. So I'm just going to turn it round so it's easier. I'm just going to pop this straight in the centre here, and this is going to give us that lovely aperture in our card. So try and get it as straight as you can. I think that will be good to go and then I'm just going to run this one I'm just going to stand up for this I'm just going to pop my plate on top and then I'm just going to run it straight through my die cutting machine now you could do this with a square um, a love heart a circle you could do it with whatever you've got in your stash have a look around if you haven't got a rectangle one maybe have a look see what alternative shapes you've got I think my cotton boss is a little bit tired. It doesn't sound very well, does it? So hopefully when we take this away. Oh no, my mat's not very clean. I'm sorry guys, I'm just gonna have to cut that one again, just simply because I really need this part and I've, got, I've had a mucky plate. So I'm just gonna grab another card and I'm just gonna do it again making sure I use the nice clean part of my mat. So start again. So pop it on here, look. Make sure my mat is nice and clean. Don't make that mistake at home. Pop that on there. Let's try again, shall we? It has to be clean. We can't have a messy card. So I'm just going to do that one again. Sorry about that. Start as you mean to go on, hey? And you can tell I'm in business, I'm stood up now. That's it. Oh, sit back down now. <laughs> What's wrong with everybody's die cutting machines? 
Uh, the new, they are new um, plates, that's the thing. Hopefully I haven't got a mark here. That's a little bit better. Still not the best, but I'm going to go with that one. It's way better than the last one. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to fold my card over here so I have this lovely window. Give it a good score line. Make sure your hands are clean. And then we've just got that lovely aperture in our card. Can we see that there? And you're going to need the bit that comes out of the centre there. So let's just move our die cutting plate. And then let's get our Eureka. So it's the centre piece that we've just taken out of our card look. So that's just come out of the centre and we're going to stamp it onto this one. Okay, so I'm just going to pop this straight into my um, Eureka. Now this is the fun part really. What do you want to colour your stamps with? Do you want a watercolour? Do you want to use your alcohol markers? What do you want to use? What I did with mine was I coloured it with the alcohol markers. So because I was using the alcohol markers, I've had to use my Memento rather than my Versafine. Okay, so mem remember to use the correct ink. And what I also did was, because I really didn't know where it was going, I coloured the heart in red and the hands to create a skin colour, but really I didn't have to... Um, colour the heart because the front piece on the acetate didn't show what was underneath anyway so I wasted my time but it was a learning curve so I'm just going to stamp this out in black because I'm going to colour the hands with my alcohol markers now I'm not overly concerned if the heart doesn't stamp very well it is a solid stamp so sometimes it can prove difficult to get a full crisp image uh, because it's going to be hidden anyway so, but as long as I get <laughs> the hands, and Tim, guess what everybody, Tim's arrived with my coffee. <laughs> Thank you. It'll probably go cold now. Um, Tim, I think Nathan's got a little message for you. So I'm just going to stamp this one out. And this is, remember, the memento, because we're going to colour the hands. Now, when I coloured my hands on my other card, I'll just show you. There we go, as long as my hands are fine. Can we see that there? That's all that matters. So as long as my hands are fine. So let's just grab some alcohol markers. Now you can use whatever you're going to colour your card in. You, you use what you've got. Now the colours I've got to hand didn't do the best coloured hands. I had like really sunburnt hands. It was so funny. But um, I still went with it. So it's not a great shake. So I just did a bit on some scratch here. Can we see that there? And as you all know, as I was making this card, I was learning as I was going on. So because I used a normal card blank, the card just drank the ink out of my pens, literally like I could feel my pen saying, what are you doing to me? So just be mindful of that as well, um, if you do choose to do your alcohol markers. So all I'm gonna do is quickly color. Now I'm not going for anything fancy. I'm just gonna quickly color these hands very very quickly just I have to do this because you'll not get the idea of how the card works if I don't do it and if I felt like I could have skipped this part I would have done but really I didn't think I could so I'm just quickly colouring those hands now you can give pretty pink nails or posh nails if you want to so make it into nice ladies hands if you want to like so and it does help if you let the ink dry a little bit as well so you don't get the smear it is the correct ink so so just get a little, little bit of color laid down there for you And then just for a little bit of dimension on the hands, I used a, a, a bit of a darker colour on the lines where the stamp suggests there is a little bit of sh shadow. So I'll just pop that in there. Pop it on the knuckle there. It dries back way, way lighter, so I'm absolutely confident that we can add this brown tone onto the hands here and it practically disappeared to nothing. So I'm going to leave that as is. But... Let's colour a nice red nail. There we go. 
So we've got some pretty hands coming together. So the next part, I had to, I f physically had to skip because it wouldn't have been dry. So you may at this point think, right, I'm going to stop where I am, I'm going to watch the rest of Tony, and then I'll go back to what I'm going to do. So we just need to set this one aside. So I've got just a panel there with a set of hands on. Okay. So I'm just going to bring this one in here. So this is some acetate. Let me just grab some white card to show you. So this is just normal acetate. If you don't have acetate, steal some backing from one of your stamp sets or something. Okay. Stamp it in black. Now, there are rules when you are stamping onto acetate, guys, and the rules are that you do not use a memento and you do not use a versify, and you need something that uh, is going to sit on a non-porous surface, surface and be permanent. So the only ink that is a good ink that I would recommend is stays on, black stays on. If you haven't got a black stays on and you're using heat-resistant acetate, you can do black embossing, okay? That's an alternative. But I've stamped this in black stays on, okay? So you're all, all going to be rushing now to buy a black stays on or thinking, do you know what? I've had that 20 years. I've never used it. So this is why. So you need a black stays on ink pad. So just remember that one, okay? Because it's really important because if you use anything else, it doesn't matter how much you blast it off with your gun. If you wait overnight, it will not dry, okay? So stays on is your best friend right now. So basically, I stamped the whole image there in stays on, and then I took some glitter glue and I coloured the heart in gold. Now on this card here, I did it in red. So for this one, can you see that there? But for this one, I just wanted to chop it up a little bit and show you an alternative way. See there? There we go. So let's just have a slurp of coffee. Be a shame to waste it now that it's been made for me. Now I have put glitter on here. You don't have to do that. You can use your, if you've got alcohol inks and the blending solutions, you could put a, a night sky in there. You could flick it with your splats. There are so many different ways to decorate the heart. It's entirely your choice, okay? So you might make this one, learn from it, and then as you grow and make more, you'll chop and change, swap out for alcohol inks, watercolours, uh, markers. There's so many different things. Super exciting. I love it when something comes together and it comes together well so there we have we have two things look we have our lovely heart that is colored with the pens and we have our lovely hands on the acetate that's got glitter on there so there we go so that's this card so far we haven't done anything exciting we took the center out of this card and we stamped that and then we've just stamped this onto some acetate here okay and we pop some sparkle on there so let's set these aside So what's next, you might ask? Now I'm just asking myself the same question. Let's just move this white card stock out of the way. So I've got my guillotine at the side of me because I want to talk you through all of the things that I've done. And we're going to do it together. So I'm just going to get rid of this stamp first of all. Make sure my pot hands are absolutely clean. And I'm also going to get rid of this Eureka. So what we've done so far is not complicated. Is everybody following me so far? Hopefully you'll be able to just watch and absorb what's going on and, and then maybe revisit uh, what's going on. You can use your alcohol markers on your acetate too. Remember that too. So if you've got alcohol markers, you could colour the heart in rainbows and spots and dots and things like that. So I'll just make sure my hands are clean. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring this piece of card in that we've got um, going on here and I'm just going to see if I've got something to give it a nice score line on there because, um, let's have a look. Something with a flat edge, is this going to help? Because, um, there we go, fold it right down, there we go. Stop it from bouncing so you can see what I'm doing. So what we're going to do first of all is we're going to bring in our lovely stamped image. Now this is going to sit back in here. Can we see that there? So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to pop some tape behind. Now you can use glue. And I'm going to sit it back in that hole so then it will sit on the back panel of our card. Like so. Okay. 
pop it back in that hole and then we can open our card and we know that that's going to be in the hole. So push it down. Let's open our card. So what we need to do now is we need to make sure that this measures up to this. Now you're probably thinking, well, why didn't you do your measurements before? This is the way that I found it the easiest. I don't measure, I just go by eye. So <coughs> all I did was I just popped my hands over, I lined them up the best I could. Now this is this acetate panel is going to be stuck in this window. So we need to make sure that the acetate is a little bit bigger than the window so it, we can stick it behind. This is the way that I did it. So I just grabbed a pen and I just put a little line so it's bigger than this square at the back. Can we see there? So I just popped a little line in here making sure my hands are still lined up. And I know that if I cut outside of those lines I'm going to be absolutely fine. Okay, you see that there? So let's just set that aside. So I can see, you can see the little black spots on there, hopefully. And then we're just going to get our guillotine. I'm just going to pop it in the guillotine and I'm just going to trim it off where I popped those little marks. So I'm going to take that line off there. And it doesn't matter if you don't do it exact because it's going to be hidden behind the door. So there we go. I'll just grab a piece of card again just to show you. Let's grab this one here, look. So you can see now we've got our trimmed image. Can we see that there? It's not perfect. The lines are still there, but it's going to be hidden behind our window. Okay, so let's just move that aside. Then we need to bring our card back into place. Then we need to get our tape runner. You can use wet glue. I'm not confident with wet glue. I've got a funny feeling it'll end up all over. So I am going to use my tape pen. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to pop some tape around this edge. Now you are not going to pop any around the top because that is where your slider is going to be. So you're going down both left and right and the base, okay? Oh, sorry, you are. Ignore me. You are. It's the acetate, not the runner. Silly Sally. So I've just popped tape all the way around here. Can you see that there? And I'm going to bring in my heart that we've already done. Now, it would be difficult to try and measure, try and stick it on like that. So the way that I found easier was I just popped my heart back in place. And when I was absolutely satisfied that it was as good as it's going to get, I held, oops. So when it's in place and you're absolutely satisfied, try and hold it in place best you can. There we go. Can we see that there? This would make a pretty card anyway, wouldn't it? <laughs> so there we go. So you can see there, so our card is on the inside. It looks pretty ugly, but don't worry, we don't see this. Okay, and then when you close it, it lines perfectly up with what's going on on the inside. Can you see that there? There we go. So are we, are we okay so far? No, Jeanette, nobody knows about the surprise. I've been working on it again today. <laughs> so exciting. So there we go. So you can see so far. So what I decided to do after this was, you know when you have a slider card and sometimes it's like you try and pull it out and it ricochets left to right. I thought, how can we get around that so it gives it a nice smooth run when you just pull it up and down. So I opened the card and I just grabbed some white cardstock here. And I just created myself some runners. So I'm just cutting some slithers about a centimetre, not even a centimetre. So I'm just going to cut several little pieces here. I'm going to cut, I'm going to three, six, I'm going to cut nine. And it doesn't matter if one's bigger than the other as long as they're roughly the same. So let's just go with that for now. So we have our, our, our little runner pieces. 
so let's bring in our card here so this is what's going to give the slider a smooth sort of transition up and down so all I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab one of these pieces here and I'm just going to stick it on the outside of our card now it doesn't matter if you go high low it doesn't matter we're just creating like a little bit of a case for our slider to run in and out of okay so I'm doing one Oops. and I'm going to put three on top of each other so that's two So we've got three so this is created like a lip so our card will sit lovely inside yes so far so good thank you Anne somebody's happy so far so these so the little strips on the other side too so don't go too close to the score line but don't go too close to your image either so pop it in there like so so I've layered up three here on the other one I did two but I'm just going to see how much difference it makes if we do three on this one. See if I get a smoother run. So it is trial and error really. So another one. So we're creating like a little bit of a pocket if that makes any sense at all. And then we're going to do some across the bottom. Don't worry if they're too long, we'll snip them off with our scissors. Oops. And then another one, and then it looks like I haven't cut enough, so I'll just cut one more after this one. cut one more so I'm just going to bring my guillotine back in just cut another slither off <laughs> you imagine what these would be like with your Christmas stuff though they'd be so so good with all your new Christmas products Although I do like the hands, I like the, I like the non-skin tone and then the skin tone reveal, I absolutely love it. So there we go, so we've got like a, we've created a lovely little pocket in there. So what we need to do now is we need to create our slider, which is really, really easy. So I've just got a piece of white card here and all I'm going to do is I'm just going to pop it in and sit it in that recess and I'm just going to look where that line is. I'm just going to pop a little mark there and I'm just going to cut straight up and cut that off. So where I popped my little fingernail mark and then if I pop it in and it's a little bit big you can see now it sits within those runners hopefully there we go can we see that there if you're thinking to yourself do you know what I'm not confident that's going to um, cut or slide smoothly can't pick it up now um, take a little bit off give yourself a little bit of grace let's have a look there we go so that's not too bad let's go with that hey so what we need to do is we just need to trim across the top too. So I'm just going to cut, pop a little fingernail mark there. And that's where we need to chop it off. If I can see my fingernail mark, sorry for the head. It's very difficult to see in here with all the lights. I think it's about there. We'll go for it, shall we? If it's too long, I can trim it down. It's a little bit long. So then when you pop this inside, like so, can we see that there? And then when we come to stick this down, this is going to need a real good score line because I've got three pieces of card in there. So just remember that, can we see there? So let us create a little tab. So I don't have fancy tab dies and I don't have the word pull. So I'm going to have to write pull on mine. But if you have the fancy stuff, that is great 
So I'm just going to cut a little bit off this excess piece that we've cut from somewhere. I am going to utilise all of the waste. And to make it look like a tab, all I did was I took my scissors and rounded off the corners, best I could anyway, like so. So I've got, I've got like a little tab shape there, can you see that there? I'm just going to grab a little piece of black from over here and what I did was I used a little bit of scrap black too just to enhance it a little bit and make it a little bit more obvious that it was a tag. So so I just stick this one on here. You could put like faux stitching around I will write the word pull on mine as well. So I'm just creating a lovely little tab here, just with a matte and layer of black. So it just pops a little bit and then I'm going to follow the pattern and follow the black around the white. And you might have a corner punch for this. I don't. I do. It's somewhere. Like so. Can we see that? So that's a little bit wide at that side. Just take a little bit off there. There we go, so we've created a little bit of a tab. Can we see that there? Nothing fancy, and you can write the word pull on there, should you wish. I do need a corner. I have actually got a corner punch, Gillian. But I've, I've nearly got through all of my boxes, which is great. So, And I found a lot of stuff that I thought I'd that I'd completely forgotten about too. So I'm excited to start revisiting some of my products, which is great. So you can see here. So, nothing fancy so far. I think it's been relatively easy so far, hasn't it? So, what we need to do now is we need to secure this completely flat. So, let's just open this one out. So, what I did with mine to secure it short, and you need to probably do the same, um, sticky glue pen. Do you mean the tape pen? Well, whose question was that? Is it the tape pens? These are from Create and Craft. I always get them on the sale though. They do like a buy one, get one free if you're talking about these. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use my tape pen on the areas where we popped those little strips to create ourselves a little sliding pocket. But I do advise that you use tape and glue. Try and be careful with the um, glue. But just to make sure that that pocket is not going to come open, Um, I would use both if you can. I mean, tape will work, but tape does eventually dry out. Let's swap that one out. So I'm just getting rid of my blocked nozzle here. There we go. So I'm just being very frugal with the um, glue. Very, very frugal. Because it'll seep out onto your acetate and you'll not be able to get it off and it'll be ugly. So just bear that in mind. So then all I'm going to do is I'm just going to push that hinge straight over so it grabs onto that piece there. And then push that in place. Hopefully it will all grab. Give it a second to grab. Give it a good push down. Like so. And then the piece of card will slit into slit, fit into your little recess here. Look. Can you see that there? Yeah, so so far. And then this piece here, I'm just gonna pop this underneath something, give it an opportunity to grab. Just going to pop it over there and then pop my Eureka on top. So let's create our little tab for our slider element. So pop some tape across the bottom here. And just pop it on my mat here, look, and then I'll get my pop it straight as I can. Get my card. Like so. And on the other one, 
on the one that I did on the other card, I turned it over and I popped a piece of um, white card on the back too to hide this uh, ugly making here. Okay. Like so. So I'll set that one aside. And then I stamped the word love, which is in the same set. And this is just going to be a sentiment for the front of our card. So I'm just going to quickly fussy cut around. Nothing fancy. I don't need the long tails, but I'm going to keep them because I'm just going to see. Just had a little idea that might make it a little bit different to my last card. So I'm going to keep the tails. So I'm just leaving like a little border around, trying to prevent any harsh lines when I'm cutting so it doesn't look too like forced. So I told you all a couple of months ago, didn't I, about us doing written instructions for all the studios. Well, obviously the girls have been doing it. So whilst I'm live, the creative team are watching the show and writing step-by-step -step instructions. <laughs> I feel sorry for them today, <laughs> having to write the instructions for this. I'm sorry, girls, if you're watching. Well, I know you're watching, um, trying to write the instructions for this one. <laughs> so as soon as they're all written we're going to get them all loaded on and then you can download the written instructions should you not wish to want to go back to youtube and stop and rewind then you'll have the lovely written instructions so there's the word love with its legs i haven't snipped the legs away as of yet so we've i think we've got written instructions for all of our craft academy stamps so far so think about that we've been doing lots haven't we absolutely lot so that's going to be great i know people like to read instructions and things and look at pictures there's pictures as well which is nice so um albeit the videos never go away you can maybe start a folio a folio a folder like a portfolio that's what i'm trying to say and you can print them off and pop them in your folder and you can refer back and if some days you're just wanting that little bit of inspiration you can flick through the book oh i remember that one let's do that one because it's it's good as a reference isn't it so, let's get our card here. So you can see why I chopped, excuse me, you can see why I chopped the leg off, it was too long. But I was thinking maybe we could pop it over this side instead of in the centre and that's exactly what I'm going to do. So this one's going to be slightly different. So I'm just going to pop this on the acetate here with a bit of tape. Now you can use wet glue and I probably will pop the legs down with wet glue but I'm not confident to do it quickly without ruining it. So hopefully our card is lovely and secure on there and then we'll pop our lovely little um, slider inside and this is where those lovely, um, you know, the my acetate come away yeah just be careful of that my acetates come away at the top stick it back in um this is where the lovely what was i going to say sorry cat oh, the, the um you know the the pocket sides we popped in this is where they they really help because they're going to help guide your um slider in and out so basically when you look at it like that you're thinking oh that's a pretty card that's really nice I mean and then the, obviously the magic happens when you come to slide out your artwork can see that there so the other things you can do to sort of embellish and make it look a little bit more pretty are if you want to pop some um, like glitter spots or gems or sequins around you can do that too just bear in mind Whatever you put on the front is going to show on the back. When we lift our slider out, these dots, because they're on that acetate panel, are going to show on the back. So just be mindful of that, okay? These are going to take a while to dry. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use this red here to fill in this heart. Push that glitter around a little bit.
Now you could pop sequins, gems, we always work in threes. So it looks white, but then as soon as you pop it on, let's just move this out of the way, as soon as you pop it onto a, I mean, you could give it as a card, pop a piece on the back and have a top folding note card as is, or you can mount it onto something that's quite big and extravagant. So let's just, I'll just show you the pull on here. So really, really lovely. You pull it out, look, and you get the lovely coloured hands in the reveal. Pop it back in there. And then this one, you could write pull on the tab too if you wanted to. So you pull it out, you get the beautiful coloured hands behind. And then the uh, lovely glittery heart. If you don't want to put anything on the acetate at all and leave it all black and white, colour the heart on the back piece of the white, which is what I did, but you can't see it. Can we see that there? You can't see it because of the glitter on the front, but it's a great... She's got nail varnish, no nail varnish. So I'll just stand them up for you because it's a bit of a clearer picture on the head, on the front camera. And we'll can mount this one. I might actually just put this on a top folding white note card, this one, um, and not pop it on a big one, maybe. I don't know, we'll see how it goes. So, did you like that one? I'm just reading your lovely comments, I've not gone silent, honestly. So yeah, so, please give it a try guys. It's such a fun, interactive card. I did notice as well, because I thought, do you know what? What, go what we could do is we could create a die that creates this concept. But when I did my research, a couple of companies have already done them. So if you do not want to do the simple version, which is pretty non-costly, and you do think, you know what, I love the concept, I don't want to measure myself, I would like a die, there are dies out there. I can't remember the brand of names. Um, if nobody had have done it, I would have considered making one, but there are brands that have done it. So, And I think this is a lovely uh, interactive way to make you get involved. I haven't measured anything, just my thumbs and my fingers. So um, I'm sure you'll enjoy doing it. So whatever you're doing, have a lovely afternoon. We're back tomorrow at one o'clock. And I do hope to see some of your makes over on the Eureka page with this technique. So pictures of it closed and pictures of it open. So have a lovely day, whatever you're doing. And I'll see you all tomorrow at 1 p.m. Stay safe, everyone. See you later. Bye.